throughout life. We it's like we know what we need to do. And we always have warnings. I believe we always have yes. warnings saying do and we have voices telling us do this, do this, whether there's subliminal messages or something, you know, something pops up on the screen, a commercial on TV, and it's telling you the very thing you need to know, you know, but we, you know, we're like, okay, eh, I'll get back to this. And you can't get back to it because we don't know. We're only promised the moment, just the moment we're in right now. Hey, everyone, let's start healing. I'm Adrienne Murchison, and welcome to episode 128 of the Let's Start Healing podcast. We have more in common than we think, and what we have in common can change the world. My guest today is a very dynamic woman. She is a pioneer in podcasting. Wow. Her name is Raven Blair Glover. And for many people who know Raven, she is known as Raven, the talk show maven. She is amazing. Raven is host of the podcast, Amazing Women and Men in Power. She is the founder of Raven International Media Broadcast Empire She is a former radio personality for CNN Radio and CBS Radio, and she really is an entrepreneur. She started her business from the ground up at the age of 55, and she is now 72 years old. And we are talking about her, her life, staying motivated and inspired aging, which is very important to me, how we feel as we age, how the world responds to us. I wrote a story recently on ageism in the workplace. And so I asked her a little about how she experiences aging, how she feels in her skin about where she is at this point in her life. And she gets very real about it. She gets very real about it. This is important to me as I get older and as I have experienced many losses in my life. And there is something that we like to say when life be life in and life is real. When life be life in, that is real. That is when life gets to us, when life seems to just be spinning and rolling and things are happening, maybe beyond our control or what we think is our control. And for me, the thing is, how do we keep ourselves moving forward? Because I have seen uh, people give up. And sometimes it's not easy going from one day to another. And how do we keep ourselves going? How do we keep ourselves motivated? And it it is really about that. It is really about reaching for something, praying for something, praying to something, that is greater than us and reaching for the thing that we know can help us shift from one feeling to a higher feeling, from a low feeling to a higher feeling. This is so essential. It's for, it's important for all of us at all ages. It is so essential as we get older and we start thinking about life and the past and experiences and what matters and if we matter and if we're relevant and just trying to stay connected. Uh, Are we lonely? Do we feel fulfilled? Is there any point to all of this? These are real things that people experience. And if somebody goes down the, the dark, deep hole, it can be hard to come back out. So I am enjoying talking to Raven about some of these real things, as well as how she is a real inspiration and uh, a lot of self-awareness and a lot of motivation. Of course, we talk about spirituality 
as I said, uh, I don't know where I would be in this world if I had to just rely on just myself. <laughs> if I had to rely on just me and my abilities and uh, my senses, and I did, I did not have, if I did not have God and uh, just that protection that I lean into, I would be toast big time, long time ago, toast, <laughs> like over, over. So again, my motivation for this podcast is for us to always know that we're not alone. You know, it's cold outside, it's winter time, it's post holidays, it's easy to go down that dark hole, but we're not going to let ourselves do that. We are going to keep ourselves up as best we can from one moment to another, one day to another. Please like this episode, subscribe to the podcast, share Let's Start Healing with at least one person you know, and let's get to it. Let's meet Raven. Let's get started and let's start healing. Welcome, Raven. Hey there. Good to see you, Adrian. It's and great. Happy New Year to everybody Thank listening and watching. Thank you. Happy New Year to you, too. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, my God. It's a, it's a blessing. I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. So I want to get into you some and oh uh, no, not me. <laughs> we gotta talk about me. <laughs> yes, we're gonna talk about you if you allow me to. And okay. if you're willing. so um people know you as Raven, the talk show Maven. Mm -hmm. And um you are 72 years old. And yes. the first thing I want to <laughs> ask you, because I'm this is so important to me, is how you're feeling in your skin at the age that you're in and how are things out in the business world for you in your business? Uh, that's something that I have been talking to women about. I've, I wrote mm -hmm. a story about ageism actually about a month ago and it's real. <laughs> it is very real. Business wise, you start to feel like people aren't reaching out to you as much. Or you start believing that. Let me just say you start believing that. And then what happened for me is I started pulling back and not being out there as much. I call it my Casper in me started showing up because I was having this stinking thinking, as the late great Zig Ziglar would say, myself. Nobody told me, Raven, that people aren't going to want you. Nobody ever said that, you know. It's just that that was my belief level, okay? Now I'm 70, things are changed. So 71, I started thinking that negative thought more. And by 72, I just took a step back. I told my host, uh, at that time we had 39 hosts, I'm gonna take care of you because you guys invested, but we're not even taking on any new radio hosts, podcast hosts, or TV hosts. I'm not going to do any more VIP days. I'm going to step back from work other than take care of the ones that's invested. And that started back in April, right after my birthday. And I didn't even have any, any new clients until November, which some of the ladies that was in uh, Lisa's class with me um, decided they were going to be host on my platform. And that was the first time that I had opened my doors back for any new clients. Yeah. So it messed with me mentally. And I know it messes with a lot of people mentally, but I would say to you and to anyone else that's 60 or 70 or even older, um, when you start feeling like you're spiraling down and you starting to notice or people starting to notice that you're not talking as positive as you do. You, you stop doing things. Check yourself really quickly. First of all, if you need to get to a, a counselor or something, do it or someone in your family. Um, and tap into 
what is it that brings you joy? Because that's what I forgot to tap into. What brings me joy? And you have to think about, okay, I'm blessed. I'm still here. There are people that babies, as young as babies, that didn't even have a chance. We've been living, I've been living for 70, 72 years. And hopefully my, I always tell people I'm going to live to 104 at least and have the energy and be able to, to live a healthy lifestyle, you know? Um, and so you have to count each blessings of the day and think about the things that make you joy. I am somebody that's very creative. And as long as I'm creating, whether it's books, whether it's courses, whether these hat wraps, because I, I invented these things called hat wraps years ago, uh, which one of these years I'm going to focus on. Uh, it's been on the back burner. But, um, you know, what is it? And I built this community called Pod Unity Community, which, you know, you had an opportunity to be in where there's no screens in between and people are able to, to meet virtually and be in the same room on the same rooftop in the same restaurant and couches. And it's the next best thing to being live. And that brought me so much joy. And the, the thing I didn't think about two months later is my mother used to collect dollhouses, Adrian. So this was kind of like me building a dollhouse in a way. In fact, my a daughter recently uh, found a picture of my mom's restaurant. And so just today, as a matter of fact, we added another portion to Pod Unity. It's going to be uh, the Blair House restaurant coffee shop. And she got a picture of my mom and dad in there. It's, it's the actual restaurant. And I got a chance this morning to have coffee sitting next to my dad. It was the coolest thing. It is, it is really beautiful. It's it's uh, virtually, uh, instead of be appearing on the screen, say, as we are, mm -hmm. uh, we're actually in a setting. And that mm -hmm. setting could be a lounge. It could be a, a living room. It could be a bar. It could be a theater. Movie theater. Yeah. We even have roller coasters and boats and planes and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. And so, yeah. So that brought my happy back. Right. And right. thank goodness it did, because uh, and that's around the time that I discovered um, Lisa's course and then met you and the other ladies. We were all part of an accountability group. So I was slowly coming back. But you were there. Yeah. So you know how I was really struggling with this Casper. So you got this raven oh, that likes to be out there. <laughs> bear with me a second. Bear with me a second. So that is something that I'd like to go into. One, number one. You are a person that uh, people are gravitated to. I was mm -hmm. gravitated to you. I noticed that other people were gravitated to you uh, in the same way. As soon as you, we were, we were in a big Zoom and mm -hmm. we, different people made comments. And as soon as you commented, I knew I wanted to connect with you and I wasn't the only one. So mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I want to ask you is about, um, what you've brought up. And, I, and then, then I want to use this to also segue into your work. Uh, you mentioned sort of what you call a Casper syndrome, where mm -hmm. sometimes you might feel invisible. And I was mm -hmm. listening to you on one of your uh, interviews, and you were commenting that you had felt that way from childhood. And yeah. it had me so curious about how you feel that way um, how you felt that way, say in the last 10 or 15 years, because you're anything but invisible people gravitate to you. And so I was wondering what that, um, how that comes about for you. And then mm -hmm. also I wanted you to talk a little about just getting started in this business. You okay. start doing this at the age of 55. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and at the age of 55 is when some people are losing their jobs mm -hmm. and uh, are, are wondering what to do next. And I also heard you say that at the time that your mom passed, you weren't making much money. And, you know, this was something that you had a passion for and got started with. And so all of that for me connects into my question of how could you feel invisible? Well, wow, that's a great question. I will have to say, um, as a child, I felt invisible. I was the baby, okay? 
Um, and so when you're the youngest, nobody has time for you. Everybody pushes you away and, oh, go away, go play. We're doing this. So that was one thing. And then my mother and father, they had these chain of restaurants in Ohio. So they were always busy. And in school, I was not really popular. Um, you know, I wasn't the cutest kid growing up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. So I couldn't. I wasn't. You know, the guys, the boys weren't interested. I, so that made me want to be tomboyish. You know, when you're young and you're getting everybody to like dismiss you, you, you really go on a hunt to find a way to get seen, right? Because okay, I'm not cute, you know, I'm not this, uh, you know, and so I started doing kind of being tomboyish, trying to find myself. So I would, you know, wanted to play touch football and, and then I got into track. So it was always trying something, but inside it was just screaming, look at me, right? Notice me. I'm here. I'm someone. Okay. And there was one time I cut on the radio. I think I was cleaning the house or something, uh, my room or something. And the DJs was telling people to call in to the station, third caller this, fourth caller that. And the phone just started ringing and they were talking to these people. And I got so fascinated with that. So by my mom's restaurant, not too far away, there was a radio station, WJMO. So I, we used to have to go from school to work at the restaurants with our parents since they couldn't be home with us. And one day I, I made a detour and snuck down to the radio station. And then the next day I snuck. And then I started being the, the pesty little girl that would hang there, bring, you know, say, do you need anybody to answer the phones or get your water, get your coffee? And uh, one time they said, hey, you know, you've been coming down here so long here. Here's the mic. Sit here and say something. And I was like, hey, I'm Raven Blair and I'm on the air. WJMO. <laughs> and that's when I knew radio was for me. I'm like, I was so excited. And then I went from that to working at the Veterans Administration Hospital. I had a little little show that um, mixed jazz music and empowerment quotes that I would take a quote and talk about it and play music to uplift the people in the hospital, you know? So that was my start in radio. But as I got older, you know, the dream, the dream circle shrunk. So I wasn't giving myself permission to succeed and kind of gave up the dream. But I always tell people the dream found me um, at the age of 55, my mother went into the hospital. She had this surgery. She was supposed to be in there for 10 days. She ended up being in ICU unit for three months. I mean, three weeks, three weeks in the ICU unit. And so one day I stayed there overnight, me, my sister and son. And one night I got on a conference call, a guy by the name of Alex Mendoza and did Teleseminar Secrets. And he was interviewing this guy by the name of Rick Frischman about books. And he then Alex said, you know, um, what Rick and I are doing now on free conference call Rick now has a podcast and you can have a podcast. You don't need an FCC license. You can use the, the uh, conference line to do it. So it's not going to cost you any money and interview people like him, interview people that already been there, done that, wore the t-shirt, drank out the coffee cup, and they can come to your audience and share their experience. And you, without you being anyone, without you having any kind of credibility or background, if you interview these type of people, best authors and coaches and mentors, you in return will become an influencer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's and the way you that's to, right to uh, CNN radio, CBS radio, which became CBS radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that started me. I I drew a paper and I said, what did I need to do and where do I need to begin? And that was February 6, 2006. April 23rd, 2006, I launched my first show from the kitchen table. One of the people I interviewed was Jane Kennedy, which got a lot of attention because people hadn't heard from her in years. And so Ebony Magazine and a lot of people were like, how did you get Jane? We want her to be on the where are you now and stuff. So I started getting this media attention, kind of like you were talking about earlier with this guy. And 
And I didn't have really that many people listening, you know, because I just got started, but they were just impressed that I got Jane, you know. And then um, one guy, he happened to ask, say that he found me through an interview and he asked me to co-host a show with him. And then he had to go on vacation. He told me to handle the show. And then they offered me a position at W-A-R-A-L-A-M. I won an award there. And then um, somehow I ran across somebody at a festival that was a producer over at CNN. And they had a show about this lady cooking And I just started a show called Careers from the Kitchen Table. And they thought I'd be a great follow up to her show. And that's how CNN, uh, which later became CBS. So now I can say I was on CNN and CBS. You're absolutely right. And one day they sent me an email and said, hey, you cannot have people come down here and take pictures on CNN sign. You cannot use the CNN logo anymore. And you cannot record your own shows. All this belongs to CNN or CBS. And I was not on their staff. I was independent. In fact, I was paying them to be on their show weekly. So I didn't go back. And my my the guy I was dating, who is now my husband, said, why don't you start your own station, your own network? And that's when Amazing Women and Men of Power uh, podcast network began that turned into later we have the radio station and now the TV channels and Raven International Broadcast Media Empire was built back in 2011. And we've been going since then, mm-hmm. uh, up to now, 2023. So it's been in total since 2006. This will make 18 years in February of me being broadcasting. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mogul. That's amazing. <laughs> That is amazing. I um, I want to ask you some spiritual questions. Yes, you do. are you are a spiritual person, I believe. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I was raised as a Baptist mm-hmm. for a while, and then um, oh, I can't even remember what the my mother them switched over to something else. I never really became part of it, but they were. So I would say I was raised in a Baptist church. My family, because they had the restaurants, it wasn't, we weren't one of those strong uh, religious or spiritual family that went to church all the time. It was more or less, okay, you got to go to church. We, I think we pretty much went on Sundays, but we didn't, wasn't one of those families that stayed all day. We were in and out. So, and my mother, them, of course, believed in the Bible and all that stuff. So I don't have a real strong foundation there, but I remember my mother say, don't let the only time you go to church is when they bury you. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that sticks in my head of her saying that because I have not been in a while. Yeah. Um, but I'm very spiritual inside. I know who God is. I believe in God and Jesus. You know, all of that is important to me. And, um, you know, doing the right thing, treating people right, you know, all that means the world to me. But I think when I realized how spiritual I was, was when I was at the, in the chapel at the hospital, you know, just praying to God, you know, wondering, is the mom going to be okay? And all of that. And it was very clear to me that, uh, that he spoke to me. I feel the God, my God spoke to me and said, your mom's going to be fine, but she's going to need you more than she's ever needed you before. And you need to step up and be the person she raised you to be. You need to show up, you know, you need to show up big time because, um, you know, she's going to be different and she's going to need to lean on you. So this is not a situation where you can drag your feet. You need to show up now. You need to figure out and show up now and grow up. You need to look in the mirror And be honest with yourself because you went to the best schools, you wore the best clothes, you know, your parents raised you to be successful. Why in the heck are you 55 years old making $10 an hour, working 20 hours a week? How are you going to ask help your mom when you can barely help yourself? And I remember leaving that room saying, step up, show up, grow up, step up, show up, and grow up. And that would, and I would put sticky notes on that, step up, show up, and grow up. And that became my focus. Because mom, she continued to live, but she was different. 
She was in a wheelchair. She looked weaker. And she was the matriarch of the family in between failed marriages and failed jobs and all that. We could always go home to mom. You know, we had lost my dad years before, about eight years before. And so the message was very strong and very clear. And, you know, I give it, you know, I know that's how I was able to um, pivot Mm -hmm. from being 55, working a job, you know, 10 hours a week, you know, or 20 hours a week making $10 an hour, whatever, you know, um, to now, you know, I'm not a millionaire by no means, but I am in six figures and I am doing what I love and I'm working from my home and I'm able to help other people, other Casparians. Hello, Casparians. <laughs> other people that feel dismissed, overlooked, unheard, you know, unacknowledged, which is what I felt. Um, my only regret is that mom and dad was not here when I walked across the stage and got my presidential lifetime achievement pin and award, because I felt even though I got that from President Obama's office, I didn't see him, but from his administration, I felt that that was God's way of telling me, you done good. Right. And that was 2016. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, I actually walked across the stage in 2017. He had left the office in January, and I, I, well, I think I got it in March or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the, the certificate says 2016 because they ha- he had to have his signature on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a wonderful honor to receive. And yeah. do you, when you think about the love that God has for you, do you have any um, practice or communication that, or is there a time when you feel that communication uh, from God, when you most experience it? Is it at any particular um, time of your day or? I think it's throughout the day. You know, I think it's throughout the day. Um, It depends on, to be honest, Adrian, what I'm facing that day. I feel it when earlier we were talking about me spiraling down, you know, because of age and just uncertainty of what's next for me. You know, I I felt him lifting me up right before I fell down. And it's and one of the ways that I know I feel strongly that God speaks to me is the things that are delivered at the perfect timing of what I need. You know, my husband, you know, just happened to see something that said, hey, you know, how would you like to build a community pretty much with no screens in between and be in these same rooms? And he sent me that email. And from that email, I was able to take what this company gave us. And the creative side of me says, well, yeah, this is cool. But what if we could be on a boat? What if we could have people on a roller coaster? What do we, you see what I'm saying? So I, the creative of me took it a step higher. Okay. And, you know, then I I wrote a book, two books during that bad time. And I know that was God's way of, he knows that I'm a creative person. So as long as I'm using my creativity, I'm going to be okay. And that brought me back up. I also feel this spirit very much. So when I'm down, when I'm down and scared, like when I'm worried about, um, my health or I'm worried about, you know, the family, you know, the things that us humans worry about. I feel a sense of peace sometimes. And I feel guidance, like, yeah, you better do this if you don't want this to happen. Like you can't keep talking about, I'm scared of what could happen to me at this age. I could have a stroke. I could have this and that. If you're not doing any preventive stuff, you can talk all day. But get your butter, put that sweet potato pie down. (laughs) Cut on that exercise tape. You know what I'm saying? Where's the discipline here? 
you know? So, you know, I feel it all the time. I feel it at my worst. I feel it at my highest. I feel like, I'm like, okay, who's going to give me an award now? I'm 72 years old. And I was feeling kind of sad about that. Then I get an email from this company said, you, you, you're one of the finalists in the podcast pioneer award, you know, and this, it was like a matter of like few days and stuff. And my husband, I just, you know, booked our tickets for Florida. They didn't say I win, but we're going to go there, you know? And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to go. What if I don't win? My husband said, you are going, we're going. You're a finalist. They ask you to come. You're going. So we're going in a couple of weeks. So y'all wish me luck. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations on that. And I know that it's not official yet. Yeah. Uh, do you know the name offhand of the organization? I would love to. Yeah. It's She Podcast. S-H-E she, Podcast. Yeah. She, she Podcast. Podcast. I love it. Uh-huh. So yeah. it's human oriented, it sounds like. Yeah, it is. And and I think this is their first big year of doing it because of the pandemic, you know, but, um, you know, they had a lot of different awards on there, but um, that's the one they say that I'm up for pioneer. It's the pioneer award. And I'm like, yeah, 72, that would be the award I get. (laughs) My husband said, you better get happy. (laughs) I'm like, well, what about this one? (laughs) What about this one? It's pioneer award. Very important. I I believe it's very important to be recognized as a pioneer, you know, because, you know, you're on the front lines, you know, not just as a podcaster, as a woman, as a woman of color, you know, you're on on the front lines as because of your expertise, I like yeah. that word. I really do like that word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, right. you back, but, you know, like Kalik was saying, you know, at this age, you got to take what you can get pretty much, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, I will say this, though. I am. I find myself constantly trying to figure out how to stay ahead. So it is different. It is different. I think, though, as we get older, we just have to really don't step back. No. You know, if you want to continue being out there. But my son said the strangest thing to me the other day, I'll share. He said something like, well, mom, we were kind of talking about, you know, age and how I was feeling. He said, I'm worried that you're going to be one of those people that as you get older, and the limelight's not on you, I'm worried that you might go back. You might be one of those people. He was telling me that's how a lot of times all timers start. You know, you get people stuck in a particular time that, you know, so that's been on my mind a lot lately. So I'm trying to process that because like, I was like, I never thought of it like that. It was like a good, you know, so. Well, I think the best thing that we can do for our minds is to keep keep it stimulated and continue to keep growing and evolving. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best thing we can do for ourselves, period. I was just this afternoon listening to uh, an interview with um, Alex Rodriguez, the uh, uh, former baseball player, great Mm all-star. And um, he was talking about, you know, all of his mentors. One of them is Warren Buffett. And he was talking about how Warren Buffett, started um, reading voraciously as a child, he was reading, you know, all these business books. And by by the age of 11, he said, uh, Warren Buffett had read every business book in the library. And then he said he was reading like, um, I don't know if it was nine books. I forgot. I don't want to make up what he said, if it was nine books a week or nine books a month and whatever it was, he said, Warren Buffett has said that now he's doing three books in whatever period of time that was. So mm. no, he can't do nine in that period of time. He's been doing most of his life, but he's doing three and he's he's in his 90s. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's just so, and he said he goes to the office every day. And I've, I've really? been in their 90s. I've worked in, in businesses where they just go to sit at the desk you know, but I don't believe that's what he was talking about. And, you know, it's just, it's very, I mean, in my, I just have to look to my late grandmother who was, I mean, she was very active and I would say she passed in the month of January and it was the month of December when she started going into decline. So she only had one month of decline, you know, so 
I think it yeah, is. It, and the thing about it is you just never know. I mean, we don't know what, what path is in front of us, yeah. but you can prepare for it is kind of what you're saying. And I, I'm a big believer in that too, that, you know, you need to work every part of your body to yes. keep going. I noticed my arms are, are getting harder to lift up and stuff like that. And my husband was saying, you better get these little five pound weights and you're not moving your arms. And then I thought about it. I'm like, well, you know, other than, you know, when I'm talking, this is about as high as they go. So now to move them up like this sometimes can be hard, you know, yes. and it's because I'm not exercising yes. right as yeah. much and stuff. So it's a lot of things that we all, and this is age when you get my age, especially, but even throughout life, we, it's like, we know what we need to do. And we always have warnings. I believe we always have yes. warnings saying do, and we have voices telling us do this, do this, whether there's subliminal messages or something, you know, something pops up on the screen, a commercial on TV, and it's telling you the very thing you need to know, you know, but we, you know, we're like, okay. Eh. Yeah. I'll get back to this and you can't get back to it because we don't know. We only promised the moment, just the moment we're in right now. Right. That's it. Right. This and is I've, all we promised this moment and right. whoop, the moment's and gone. It's true. And, <laughs> and I've, I've been thinking about how our body is kind of like a, a, a uniform. Like it's only going to last as long as it lasts yes. and we have to do our best you know, to keep it in good shape. And the things mm -hmm. that you're bringing up, that's true. Like if, if I can't lift my arms because I'm not exercising, that was true when I was in my thirties. Mm -hmm. If I, if I went long without working out, my body mm -hmm. would start feeling sore. Yeah. And I yeah. Have out, body aches and stuff it. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same thing. It's just that we have to do it more as we get older. So, and the same yeah. thing with our mind, like we were yeah. talking about Warren Buffett. And, you know, nowadays the good news is, you know, like my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. But thank goodness I can get any book I want just about on audio. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So but you don't want to not read, you know, so yeah. I may not be reading books, but I'm constantly on the computer. I'm constantly working. And you only hope and I only hope that I can, you know, work for as long as I can. People ask me all the time, well, how long do you think you'll be doing broadcasting? And I'm like, well, I know I would love to continue broadcasting for the next decade for sure. And then after that, hopefully right. my children will either take it over or I sell it, but I'll probably always be at least bare minimum doing the podcast. Yeah. You you know. Know, so my boyfriend likes to say to people, let me tell you something. Like, let me tell you something, Adrian, or so I'm going <laughs> to say, let me tell you something, Raven, <laughs> 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 that, uh, did you know, I learned this from CNN, watching a segment on CNN, that uh, people over 55 are, as in senior citizens, are um, some of the, the leading um, people on TikTok. No, yes. are you serious? I have yes. yet to yes. dare yes. to uh, take yes. a step on TikTok. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I know I'm saying this, knowing this, and I've, I've, I'm barely a presence. I'm not even a presence on TikTok other than <laughs> to watch, you know, what's on there. And, but that is true. That is true. So, you know, you've got it going on. Just, just <laughs> well, thank yeah. you so much. I just want to make sure my voice and message get continues yeah. to get out there yes. because and you know this as a journalist and the podcast host, uh, a wonderful podcast host that you are. And any of you listening, you know that our voice is you know, our name and our voice are two things that we have to keep fresh, have to keep out there and have to be mindful of what they both represent. You know, your right. name, my dad told me a long time ago, Raven, your name is all you got. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. don't do anything that's going to bring shame to your name. And that means your name and the name, your family exactly. that's connected to that name. Exactly. And then your voice, 
nowadays, there's no reason for your voice to not be heard. When I was coming up, there were reasons, lots of reasons, but now your voice can be heard on podcasts, radio, TV, books, blogs, you know, social media. Your voice can be heard. So be mindful with me saying that. Here comes the plea from me to you, for all of you that are listening. Be mindful of what you put out there. You know, I, I think social media and stuff is just like TV. It's entertaining. But I want you to also consider the people that the many people that get to see and hear what you do. I want you to consider that years from now, decades from now, when you're gone, that's going to be left here on this earth to your your imprint that I was here. So what I'm thinking about now is keeping the imprint of the positive programming that I have done these past 17, this year, 18 years, the positive messages to uplift people, to move them forward, to give them hope, bringing them good news they can use instead of all the other news. So we're real, real big on our station on bringing good news that you can use. So think about what you want to, to place here that's going to be here decades after you're gone, where your kids and your grandkids and your grandkids, kids and kids can say, this is what Aunt Adrian did. This is what Mama Raven did. This is what, you know, you can put it, you can get yourself in books. That's a wonderful, that's, that's huge. And it's a wonderful thing. I mean, I think about uh, ancestry, you know, dot com and, you know, going looking for our ancestors and just wanting any crumb, you know, of information when we're looking up you know, our ancestors and you better look me up, girl, yeah. see if I'm on your tree. I don't know. I, I agree. And but to have, <laughs> you know, this wealth, you know, of video and audio, you know, for, you know, the, the people who come after us is mm-hmm. it's a treasure. It's a treasure mm-hmm. to have. So I want to ask yeah. you one more question. OK. And um, that question is, is there a blessing or a miracle that you experienced that you said to yourself, this was completely God. I had absolutely nothing to do with this. Yeah. Receiving the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let me tell you why. Because there was a girl, a lady, um, that used to be in my mastermind, was in my very first mastermind when I started business. And um, we used to do a live event And um, we did a ceremony at the end of the event called the Emily Awards, what was named after my mom. And so I would make sure every host would get an award. I wanted them to walk down the carpet to get the award because I never I got a couple awards, but I never was able to walk to get them. And that was a big thing for me. And um, this lady who was in the mastermind and had got several awards. She got lost one time driving somewhere and she stopped in this building. They were giving these awards out and all these people and stuff. And she said, what's going on? And th- they said, oh, um, we're celebrating. These people are getting the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. And, and she said, oh, okay. And she just stayed there and watched it. Well, she, while she was there, um, she met the the... Uh, business ambassador for Barack Obama. And they were talking and somehow she was able to start doing business with them or helping them out. I think she was volunteering to help them out. Um, And this is a place she got lost and just happened to get in. And one day she said, how does one get an award? And so they told her and she said, "Ah, I know somebody. That's how I got the award. Wow. And she hadn't been in my organization for seven or eight years, hadn't talked to her or anything, but she wow. remembered me from the time that she was. And so she's the one that submitted my name. Not only is that so beautiful, but you must have had such a big impact on her. 
Yes. I, I mean, she was in my mastermind for three, four years and she didn't even have a business. And from being in it, she was able to start a business and stuff. She's doing very well now. And uh, it, it just so I knew that was a God thing. I knew that was a God thing, you know, and uh, it, it's Love just it. amazing. So that when you said that, I knew exactly what it is. I knew. exactly. And like I told you earlier, I felt um, that it was God telling me you, you done well. Yes. You know, because remember the message I was getting was step up, show up and grow up. And that, and I hadn't even started a show. And then I look at all these things, you know, to have created a show from a hospital, you know, and then it turned into this media and broadcasting empire and, you know, now getting the, the awards and all the stuff. Same Raven still have the Casper syndrome, still feel dismissed sometimes. But what I've learned and what I want to pass on to your audience and to you too, Adrian, is to give yourself permission to succeed. Give yourself the permission to succeed. You want to be on a magazine. Nobody's putting you on the cover. Do like me. Create your own magazine. Put your own self on the cover. You want to be on radio and nobody's saying yes because you don't have the numbers. You don't have this. Start your own podcast. Start your own radio show. You know, you want to be on TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, and put your own self on TV. You want to do a play, create a play, put it, you know, do your own thing. You want to speak, start having, uh, inviting people in your home, start with your friends, and then, you know, rent out a place in your area for low, charge $25 for everybody to come, do your one woman show, do whatever it is, you know, you got to do it. And I think, when I created the Emily Awards in honor of my mom and I let other people walk down that carpet and get their award, experience something I didn't, I began to open the, the avenues or you know, the opportunities for me to get all the different war awards. I forgot I got my green screen up, but if you didn't sit, you'd see the different awards. I'm an eight time award winning host right now. And hopefully if I get this other one, the ninth one, but you know, you got to make things happen yourself. And I, until I stepped up, showed up and growed up, like the message told me inside, none of this would have happened. None of this. And I am the happiest that I ever even could imagine myself. Three failed marriages. Uh, the last one left me at the age of 60. He gave me flowers on my birthday and the next month put a sticky note and said, I'm out. Went back to an old girlfriend. Kalik and I had met in, you heard me say, Alex Mendoza's Teleseminar Secret. We had met virtually on his mastermind. N never, never crossed the line or anything. It was just accountability partners, much like you and I. And then he happened to call me one day and say, I had a grandson and I'm calling all my friends and tell them I have a grandson. And I started crying. Oh, my husband left you. Oh, he said, I'll call you when I get back. And now we're married. You know, he's a Grammy Award mixing engineer. I say, God saved the best for last um, because he takes care of me. He holds my hand when I'm walking down the steps. He makes sure I don't wear heels and stuff. And he takes such good care of me. And that's the person God knew I needed in my life that's at this true. age, because you never know what's you know, going to happen. You don't need anybody that's going to leave you. You know, you need somebody that's going to be there. Somebody that who might have to bathe you, you know, may have to help you, you know. And that was one of the first questions we asked each other. And we told each other, we're looking for somebody that's going to be there, you know, through the bad times. What if I can't talk? What if I can't walk? Can I count on you? You know, that's yeah. that you are so right. You are you are so right. Unbelievable. When is your birthday? April 12th. April 12th. You're Aries. Aries. I, fire I, and I, desire, I, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Taurus. I'm a Taurus, but my descendant sign is Aries. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We're, you know, I see so much of both of us in each other, you know, so I think we instantly connected yes. right away for so many different reasons. And I'm just so yes. glad our paths crossed. Thank you so much for having me on to your amazing show. Oh, so that you. for your audience. They don't call me Raven to talk show Maven for nothing. Casper inside of me or not. I will talk. <laughs> yes, you will. And I, I appreciate that. 
How can people get in touch with you? You know, the best thing to do is just um, follow me on Facebook or LinkedIn. I'm more on LinkedIn now than Facebook, and it's under Raven Blair Glover. But I, I did just release a book. I'll give um, Adrian a link to for anybody podcasting that shows you how, you know, podcasting and AI can help your show or turn your show into a cash machine. So that just came out last week. I haven't promoted it anywhere. You're the first. It's available on Amazon. No, no, no. I'm just doing the uh, PDF version right now, the um, digital version rather right now. Okay. I'll probably release it, um, I don't know, sometime this year. But right now, I mainly did it just to, uh, it was one of those things I was creating when I was feeling kind of down and stuff, yeah. just putting my thoughts and stuff in there. So I just want to get it out so podcasters can start profiting with their show, because that's the biggest problem with most podcasters. They love what they do, but they hate they're not making any money. So this is a freebie, but you're the first to get it. <laughs> How about well, that? Thank you. thank you. I'm looking forward to receiving it. And congratulations on everything. And so thank much you. that you said, um, uh, I just want to, you know, I heard everything you said. I thought it was so beautiful when you mentioned the Emily Awards. Uh, that's yeah, really we're actually bringing cool. that back this year for the first time. Uh, the last time we did was 2017. So this year I'm going to start the Emily Awards and every host of mine will be getting an award. So that's, and we're going to do it virtually cool. on our new platform. We got the red. We're building it right now. It's going to be amazing. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Raven. I really, thank really you. appreciate being here. This has been a joy. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Adrian. You're an amazing, amazing talk show host. So keep doing what you're doing. Lots of awards coming your way. I can just feel it. And uh, thank you from my heart to all of you that are listening, watching, hearing. Please, please keep listening to this lady. And remember some of the golden nuggets we talked about. And give yourself permission to succeed. You might be like me. It might be time to step up, show up, and grow up. But guess what? You can do it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Remember, you can listen to Let's Start Healing episodes on traditional platforms wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple, Spotify, iHeart, YouTube. Please share Let's Start Healing with at least one person you know. Again, like this episode, please subscribe. And until next time, let's start healing.